Oh, go. Oh, cool. Hi, everybody. I'm Jordan Chapman from the Bar Talk Podcast, and I'm supposed to be bartending right now, but instead I'm hanging out with Andy and Fish. Um, we're at the opening here of the Carl versus Jordan uh, bet settlement, I guess you could say. All the money's going right to the Plymouth Area Coalition for the Homeless. Uh, again, I'm supposed to be working right now, but I'm wearing the Hawaiian shirt, um, so I really... And dressed as you. And Kyle's dressed as me, so he's the one actually working, I'm the one pretending like I'm working hard. Yeah, but you won the bet, so I don't think you should have to work that hard. Uh, you know, it's for a good cause, so i got to put some sweat and tears in I this s- thing to make sure the coalition gets some money, but... I suppose. So, hopefully your listeners don't mind that I'm helping out today, and uh, we're going to be recording and talking to a lot of different people who are, are in attendance. Hell yeah. Uh, some past guests, some future guests, and some random drunken people, hopefully. Uh, yeah, there'll be all that. Yeah. And, and I'm sure more. Is Wh- there a prediction on the winner for the... Uh, Arm wrestling competition. Speedwell all the way, man. I got I got I got E dubs of Speedwell Tavern and Michelle, uh, aka Crazy Horse going today, drunk Oh wait, she's the one dressed up as a, a Yeah. Oh okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I mean I got my ringers. I'm not I have no doubt all that right. my, my boys are gonna pull through. I'm a little nervous about Anthony Gallerani, but uh, otherwise I think we got this. Excellent. Well thanks for uh, letting me fill in for you guys. Uh, go earn uh, so the charity is Uh, Plymouth Area Coalition for the Homeless. Uh, It's a food bank out of Kingston, but they do so much more than that. Um, It's near and dear to my heart. The uh, Sue Giovanetti and Linda Heenan, um, uh, members of the board. Uh, Sue Giovanetti is the head of of the board. They just do so much for the community, and this is just another great thing. And this is an opportunity for Speedwell and New World Tavern to be able to feed people that we're, like, normally not able to reach. Oh, (laughs) shit. Maggie's got it. Um, so, yeah, so go earn some tips. Remember, show cleavage that gets tips. I got plenty of it. All right, man, thanks. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is your guest host, Andy, uh, with our first guest of the night. Um, everyone knows him from the Jam Pack podcast, um, from playing around town, and from his career cooking chicken wings. Hey. Uh, it's Matt Audette. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, man? Um, so we are just getting underway here. Uh, so you said you had the day off. You're over here uh, knocking back some beers for a good cause. Yes, sir. Hanging out. And uh, you are not competing in the arm wrestling competition. No. Uh, was this by choice or with? Like- uh, it was. I could have if I wanted to, but uh, we're having E Dubs go up and do his thing. He's our he's our uh, Trojan horse in the speedball kitchen. So yeah, we're hoping he'll take it down and you know make us look good, nice. and strong, and. Nice. Yeah. I think it's a really different thing to do for entertainment. It's it was. I didn't know that that was going to happen. We have Michelle going up, too, and apparently she's like an old-school professional arm wrestler. Or something. Oh, no shit. I, I, I don't so know. she's like a ringer, yeah. They're yeah, like, I guess so. Oh, I've never done this before. I know. I'm waiting <laughs> to see her like slam people's arms down like dust comes off the table. I'm curious <laughs> to see if someone gets injured. Uh, I mean, that's I that's not, crossed but, my mind, you know, yeah. I, I, I hope that doesn't could, happen. But You know, a few people start getting drinks in them and, you know. I don't want to see anyone's arm get, like, snapped in half or anything. Like I said that, and I'm like, oh, wait, I know most of these people, so yeah. no, I don't really want to see that. Um, cool. uh, do you have a prediction of who's going to win? Do you think it's going to be speed up all the way? Yeah. Speed well. i got to represent. Yeah. Yep. It seems like everyone's just going to be like, my team's going to win, but, you know. That's how it works. That's what you do. Yeah. That, that's what got uh, Carl into this mess in the first place. If he didn't... Uh, well, he bet against I was going to say, if he didn't root against yeah. his own team, <laughs> he wouldn't have this problem. Yeah. Um, so, he's ten and bar. You're drinking Budweiser now. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be switching over to make him make some crazy-ass drink? I thought about it. I was, like, almost going to look up, like, what's the most, like, stupid, ridiculously measured and, like, complex drink to try and have to make. But yeah. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, like, screw up his mojo. He's going to be slammed. So, I think I might just rock it with the Budweiser yeah. and keep it real. I, I feel like I'm going to... I also have to work tomorrow, so... Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, so do I. Um, but I feel like I'm going to you know, maybe hit up some Mai Tais or something. Some, yeah, At least make them work for it yeah. a little bit, you know? Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thanks for giving us a couple minutes. And, Absolutely. Uh, everyone pleasure. can find you on the Jam Pack podcast. Yep. And uh, playing around town. Uh, where's your next uh, scheduled um, date? I will be at the Waterfront Bar and Grill this coming Thursday, 8 to 11. So this will probably go up Wednesday, so tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow night. Sweet. Yes, sir. Uh, nice game, man. Absolutely. All right, Thank cool. you. Thanks. Okay, so we are here with the craft beer seller, arm wrestling um, contender, uh, Anthony Hollywood Hogan. Yep. Uh, 
Get it right, brother. Hollywood Hop Hogan. Hop Hogan. Oh. Yeah. Hopamania is running wild Hop-a-mania. for all my Hopamaniacs out there. <laughs> Nice. Um, so, how did you get suckered into this? Was are you looking forward to this? Was this like, uh, well, like how serious are you taking this competition? It's for uh, fun and for charity, but yeah. I will never let down my hopamaniacs. Yeah. I'm going to give it all. I'm going to uh, say my prayers, eat my vitamins, drink my beer, and I will. Uh, I'll go out to win. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so, both uh, both um, divisions, I guess they're you know male and female. Uh, yeah. Craft beer, so I'm going to take it all. Like, who, what? Co- who's the competition you're worried about? Uh, I'm definitely worried about, uh, you know, Mark from Malabar. Yeah, definitely. He's Especially, a big dude. Yeah, he's and a big he, dude. He's got that very imposing mustache. Yeah, the mustache is is very, but no, you know, no one can compare to Hogan's mustache. Right. So, so is this like a um, like a, a Popeye thing where you know Popeye has a spinach, you have to eat your hops before you? Yeah, I'm definitely, you know, I've I've uh, enjoyed, you know, Mayflower New World. Yeah. Because, you know, that's what the NWO does. <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna hulk up, and hopefully I, uh, you know, kick out on three and, and beat all the competition. Nice. Uh, what would be your arm wrestling finishing move? Oof. I mean, over the top's already taken. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't have the flexibility right now to do the uh, big boot leg drop over the arm wrestling table. That would be worth a show. That would yeah. be a show, though. So we'll just go with the Axe Bomber. Okay. Nice. Yes. Yeah. And um, your thoughts on Over the Top, starring Sylvester Stallone? It is. Is it, a, is it a, a great movie or is it a total dud? It is a cinematic masterpiece. Nice. Yes. Well, best of luck to you. Thank I will uh, be over here equally rooting for everybody uh, to play that you know fair, even field kind of guy. Yeah. And uh, thanks for being on the podcast and best of luck. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Of uh, what team were you? Malabar. Malabar. Great New place. restaurant. Yep. Right. Uh, so you were kind of my favorite. Thank you. Uh, you were kicking ass. I'm a lot of everyone's favorite. Uh, great. Well, that's cool. So, um, like, what was the point where you like, I have this, I don't have this? Dude, Pocahontas killed me. Yeah. Everyone else was like, yes. She and then she came up and I was like, people. she did it professionally. So I, I feel that. really yeah. good about myself. I, I think you were really impressive because there were a lot of people. I didn't think I'd make it that far. I, you amazed me because there were so many people where you're like, no, nah, I'm not done. Like, I was shocked. I was like, oh. So what do you do with the mailbox? I waitress. You waitress. So is it? I'm there Wednesdays, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday double. Yeah. So is it from holding all those uh, trays up? Like, they don't have trays. I have four kids, so I think it's... Just from kids. kids around? Yeah. Nice. So have you always worked in the uh, restaurant? Field? I have for a long time. Are you planning on going into the professional arm wrestling uh, circuit? No. No? I'm in school for business management, so business hopefully management. I'll... It might be in the restaurant business, but... Right. I don't want to wait for this first. No. Uh, but are you planning on... I feel like this may happen again. I feel like this is a huge success. I know. I go, I don't even have to work out. Look how good I did next year. I oh, don't even have to work that out. That was so impressive. I really. was impressed by yeah. myself. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, thanks for taking a couple minutes to talk to us. Thank you so much, Andy. It's on my shirt, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. You have a great night. You too. So we are live. We are with the winner of the men's comp, uh, men's division. Four time. Uh, you got to lean a little bit, so because uh, it's kind of uh, loud here. So uh, you kicked ass today. Thank you, thank you. Right up until you like arm wrestled a really old guy. <laughs> and just fucked you up. That was a real trip, right uh, there. Dude, seventy-seven. You yeah. How old are you? Uh, twenty-five. So you're twenty-five, and you lost to a seventy-seven-year-old. Yeah. Guy. But yeah, his forearms are twice the size of mine, man. man. His, oh, dude, man. his arms were amazing. Yeah. No, so, huge, uh, man. Did you come into this being like, I'm gonna win this? All right. So I, I really didn't get notified till about three days ago. Yeah. But uh, oh, you just found out three days ago? Well, I knew it was going down. I knew this, but uh, we were trying and to nominate you're, people. You're representing so, the Blue Eye Crab. Crab. Yes. Yep. Downtown. One of my favorite places. Thank you. Appreciate it. We work yeah. hard over there, man. I, I like their food, not your arm wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, at what point did you feel like, was there one person that you were kind of gunning for, like, if I beat him, I've got um, this? 
Because the, the dude with the glasses, I forget his from, name. Ma- Mark from uh, Malabar was impressive. Yeah, I wanted to, I never faced him. That was one of the yeah. people I was like, if I uh, beat him, I'll be fine. Yeah, Gabe. And, and the guy with the glasses? The guy with the glasses. Oh, uh, yeah. I think your mom was sitting in the bar with Sam. Yeah. And uh, she's he uh, had the pink shirt on. He had the mug in his hand. He uh, oh Roman, yeah, that, yep. yeah, that face man. Yeah. Oh man, dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, you once I beat him, I was yeah. like, where? Right, you you cool. felt like you kind of yeah, I got more confident. So I, I did notice you're the only person that brought a trainer with you. <laughs> yeah, um, that's my trainer. <laughs> was him toweling you off? Did that like help? Yeah, absolutely. No, I get train- sweat in my eyes like fucking. Yeah, your trainer's name is uh, Tony Wills. Tony Walls? Bartender do it for me. Well, I crap. So, yeah, yeah, like that, so I have no voice. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I'm la- I will have nothing tomorrow. <laughs> so, can people go to the Blue Eye Crab, sit at the bar, and be like, I want to fucking arm wrestle Mike right absolutely. now? Absolutely. A- I, 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 th- I think absolutely, as long as no. no I don't shit goes like, down, like, I'm like down, yeah, there. yeah, right. absolutely, come so right in, I'm prepping, I'll, I'll, right now. Yeah, I'll be prepping on the backstage, and you'll see me, absolutely, and <laughs> you come in, and I'm going to tell people, me. go in, and you have the swordfish uh, lettuce wrap, Woo! yeah, so, you know the deal, dude, you know I'm the deal, I'm not lying, I love that place, don't forget, don't forget about our Sunday brunch, yeah, yeah. I've never been for Sunday yeah, brunch, yeah, no, 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 do you know what I just found out about, 33 every Sunday, no, no, I just found out about, like, Thursday fried chicken, yep, yeah, I just found out, I'm on the bar, I marinate, I marinate that chicken, yeah. So All I right. can tell you it's perfect. So, so great dipping honey. So, so if, you need, if you need your chicken marinated and you want to arm wrestle, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike. yeah, absolutely. Fat, fat Mike. I'm fat Mike. Fat Mike. Yes. Fat Mike. Yes. Nice. Yes. yes. So very come, committed. Come in. <laughs> throw down. Yes. Put your money where your mouth is. Exactly. And beat Mike. Exactly. If you can. If you can. Now the bar. Now the in the house. Where you can come in for fried chicken and throw down and challenge Mike. Yeah, yeah, right. See? Yeah, he's, he's, he is yeah. down with it. He totally is. is. This guy's signing autographs all week long. Come by. That's my boy. Awesome, Mike. Congratulations. I Thank you so it, much. Man. Thank I you, man. Love Thank you. I love you, too. I love you the most. Okay, so we are live here with Michelle, who is the female champion arm wrestler of Plymouth Bars. Is that, is that the title? That is, okay. I guess. So, I heard rumor that you're a ringer. Well. That this isn't your first arm wrestling rodeo. It's not my first arm wrestling rodeo. So, you did it professional? When I was, like, a young kid. Okay. So now I'm 52, so. You still kicked everyone's ass. (laughs) Like, you didn't lose at all. No. Um, so at what But I have horses. You know, so like, you arm wrestle your horses? No, but you, when you have horses, you have to work a lot. And yeah. You use your arms and your So at what point were you, So did you walk in here being like, I'm going to totally just no. blow everybody away? I walked in here being sick to my stomach, like scared. Yeah? Yeah. So who yeah. was your biggest competitor? Like, who were you nervous about? I didn't know. No? I had no idea. No idea? Um, in retrospect, who do you think was, like, your the toughest one to beat? Um, you can name names. Really? Nobody. Really? I mean, you didn't... I really didn't fight with anybody. Yeah. You just kind of... Except rolled. for Matt. You just arm right now, Matt. I arm wrestle Matt, and I... Matt from... Uh, Matt um, from just one of my customers. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Did you beat him? Nope. No. Well, I feel like that's fair. So... It's super impressive. Congratulations. Hopefully, I, I feel like this is a great success, and I think they raise a lot of money for the food pantry. Um, are, are you planning on uh, defending your title next year if they do this again? Absolutely. Awesome. So thank you for joining us, and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, don't ever arm wrestle me. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. All right, so we are here with Sarah from Mayflower Beer. Um, and you competed on the Mayflower team in the ladies' division. I did indeed. And how do you feel you did? You know, I came in. Uh, I had competed before. I did you give your hundred and ten percent? I think like that's a sportsy thing. You know, it's it's tough to tell because you never know who's coming in. Yeah. You know, we had some talent. I heard some rumors of somebody who had competed before. She destroyed everyone. And she destroyed everybody. She did fantastic. She's my new lady hero. Like, I would not sign up to compete in the ladies' division. Oh, God, no. No. God, no. No, she would destroy me. But, you know, knowing that that was there, I was, you know, I went in and I was like, you know, I'm going to come in and have some fun. 
I competed before. I actually participated in uh, the Pink Blue Society, oh, okay. which is uh, an old ladies support group that raises money for women working in the brewing industry. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, that's actually where Car got the inspiration to start this competition. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, so okay. it's great. You know, it, it actually, not only did it raise something for women in the industry, you know, even though women kind of started the industry in the first place, yeah. we actually have brought it back, you know, supporting, we have fundraisers going on through the Pink Blue Society, making sure that people are able to come in, they're able to get the support, we have fundraisers, we have um, we have 100% backing on them, so when they go through the industry and they're trying to learn their 100% capacity, they're getting compensated for it. Yeah. We have 100% the support. Is, is there, like, some sort of uh, website, Facebook, where people can go check that out? Or? Oh, yeah, just go on to the Pink Booth Society. The There's Pink a, Booth? Yep, Pink Booth. It's all over the country. So yeah. um, I'm a part of the Pink Booth Society in Boston. Awesome. Um, so I actually competed at Wormtown a couple months ago where I was able to uh, compete against. It was, um, it was Brewers versus Farmers. So not only was it brewers, people who are making the great beer, but yep. we also had the people, farmers who are making the hops. And, exactly, oh, that's people, so cool. farmers. They're taking our spent grain. They're you know making our hops. It yep. was a hundred percent like the funnest thing I have ever done. So to participate in Plymouth, it was the best thing I've ever done. This was so much fun. Um, I, I can't believe how competitive it was and fun, and everyone was having a blast. Uh, the support in the community was just so insane. great, and every like. Everyone should hate each other because we're all competing for the same dollar, but everyone gets along so great. It's fantastic. You know, um, and you don't see that community all that often. Um, so Plymouth has this individual society where it's like, you know, you have restaurants, you have breweries, everybody is supporting one another, and it's just this huge support that you just don't see across the country. Yeah. And it just is a special community. We love having everybody together. You know, I had breweries, we had liquor stores, we had restaurants. Everybody's going for the same business. Everyone kept asking us, like, oh, you guys aren't competing? I'm like, we don't have a girl. And I feel like all the girls would beat me. So, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, I had so many people... Here today that like walked through the door I'm like no matter what they're going to beat me oh, it, um, it was just so much fun um, so Mayflower just had their 10 year anniversary yes we just celebrated our 10 year so anniversary so what's happening for the next 10 years in Mayflower so we ha- actually have a lot of exciting things coming up this year Yeah. so as everybody I'm sure is aware we have the 400 anniversary coming up for the, I all be- of when is that again uh, 2020 I believe that's what they're saying. I, I'm pretty sure that's, that's right. That's the rumors yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah. I'll, have to, I'll have to Wikipedia, but I'm pretty sure. So, 2020, uh, we're actually developing a beer. And yep. this is actually in the works. Um, I just have a little sample of the label that's coming out. Um, we're developing a beer. And the whole spiel on that is something to talk about. Yep. So, we have 398 that's coming out this year. So... 2018. Oh, 399. Oh, yes. very so, fancy. And the whole labeling is. You're now, gonna, when you drink these beers, do you have to have your pinky out? Well, of course. I right. mean, why wouldn't you? Right. But uh, you know, I'm not particular. Okay. You come in, picky in, picky out. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna judge one. Okay. But it's sophisticated beer in the sense that it is supporting what's going on in our culture. Nice. You know. The United States, everything that came together was yeah. developed by beer. So yes, very much so. Yeah. Now we have a beer that's coming out that's supporting the 400th anniversary. So you have 398. Next year will be the 399. Both of these beers will be available. So 398 will be available from the time that it's available until the end of the year, and then we'll have 399 come out, For and then we'll year. have our extremely exciting. I can't even, we don't even know what it's going to be yet. So, it's going to be the 400th anniversary So, off the record, you're going to hook me up with some 400 beer? I can give you some samples off the fermenter. All right, all right. I'll let you know when okay. it comes out. Sweet, sweet. But, at this time, I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, there's so much potential that's coming out. We might be getting some barrels in that are new that maybe will age something. 
I mean, this could be something that's brewed this year that we wait two years on to release. Yeah. It's all in what's going on. So uh, the Mayflower Brewery is located over in the Industrial Park just off Route 44. Yep, it's uh, the, 12 Rex, Red yep. Lake Road. The uh, tap room is open when? It is open Wednesday through Saturday from 12 until 8 p.m. And then Sundays from 12 to 6 p.m. Then you can get pints and so we do pints. growlers. Yep, and, we do yep. pints. We do half pints. So the pints and half pints range from $3 up to $7. We have a voyage, which is more or less what you would hear as a flight. A flight, yeah. But of course, with the Mayflower, it's a sure, voyage. voyage. Um, so that's five seven-ounce pours for $10, which is about two and a half pints. And then we also do growler fills. We do 32-ounce. We do 64-ounce. And then, you know, just come in and sample some things. We offer five um, samples of anything you'd like for free. You can get a tour of the facility, which also goes over a nice historical presence of Plymouth. It goes over our historical connection. Um, the owner of our company is actually a 10th generation descendant of John oh, Alden. Nice, nice. So we have a huge, huge presence within Plymouth, and we have a huge connection. Um, and you and know, it's just, just fun. a huge, it's yeah, just fun. just huge fun. We have a huge connection with Plymouth. You know, we have some games. We we have a TV. So every every time I go into the the, the uh, uh, pour room, there's someone I know there. And I can sit and have, oh, yeah. a, have a pint with someone I think I that it's been a couple times where you've actually come in where I have actually had to like wait a couple minutes before we can actually talk. Right, yeah. Because you've been chatting. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Um, and that's the thing. Like, I love the the connection that we have with our regulars that come in. And then there's also like a huge presence. Like, this weekend, I just showed up on a whim. I was out shopping. I have weekends off. And I ended up behind the bar because it was just so busy yeah. that, you know, I ended up chatting so, with a bunch of people. So tell me, because them. this happens to me. Where every great once in a while, I'll talk to a friend, and I'll be like, I want to go somewhere where I'm not an inebriate Andy. And they're like, oh, I get it. And then you, ha- you end up at, like, a Friday's or, you know, like, a Chili's. Somewhere, like, no one, do you do that? Where you're like, I just want to go somewhere where no one's going to bug me. You know, it's, I 100% understand <laughs> what you're talking about. I've actually said it a million times, you know, I go out to bars and half the time I'm sitting there and all of a sudden so, I turn and I'm like, oh, hey, okay, I was, what's just, going on? I was yeah. just chatting with you like yeah. a half hour ago. And you, So you have to go to like that kind of normal, quote unquote, normal place to be like, yeah. oh, I just want to be left alone. I'm going to go to uh, Red Robin. <laughs> you know, I have a friend that actually is part of like, it's uh, the Cold Spring Club that's all men and on Saturdays they let women in. Yeah. And it's kind of like... Low key, you don't really see a lot of people, and like I love going there because it kind of gives you a minute. Because every and not to say I don't love this, oh. but like half the time I do go out, you know, I go to Speedwell. Like here we are in New World right now. You're like Sarah. Yeah, I walk Where? in. And like yeah, I know everybody, yeah. and it's like you know, I walk around. And I always have business cards on hand because I ended up talking to the people, and I'm like. We have had so many conversations. Like, I see you everywhere. I know your name. Like, all of a sudden, like, these people are in my phone book, on my phone. Like, <laughs> Texting you. Oh, yeah. Because like, I do that all the time. You're like, hey, Sarah, I just yeah. thought of something. And you're like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is what's going on. Yeah. Like, we have a new beer coming out, and I have people, like, when is this hitting the shelves? Like, I have people directly connecting me, and it's fantastic. But, you know, there is always some, that time yeah, where, like, it's nice to kind of go out somewhere yeah. where it's a little quiet. Awesome. But so, it's, it's kind of hard with Mayflower, you know, especially in Plymouth. You know, I live in Plymouth. Mm-hmm. I work in Plymouth. It's hard to find a place where you can go and they're not And no one knows your name. It's exactly. the opposite of cheers. <laughs> it's the opposite of cheers. You know, so, everybody knows your name. But thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, great job tonight. Uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, I, hopefully I had the a next blast. time it this comes awesome. in, you know, I'll do a little bit better. And I'll see you. Let's end on a high five. Uh, all right, so we are here with uh, Arm Wrestling Rob. Yep. And uh, so do you guys... Uh, apparently, you guys have a business where you go from like place to place to, to do arm wrestling competitions. So I wouldn't know if I would actually call it a business, but it's kind of like people helping people. You yeah. know, sometimes. Um, yeah, we've done this a few times with yeah. other bars and uh, around Somerville. Other people have helped out with different things. It's really exciting and fun, but it's mostly really exciting for us because we're so used to competing, where it's always serious and. Everyone's worried constantly. Do I you don't have, have it today? You don't normally have people show up and tea and uh, yeah, exactly. Gloss around this, is awesome. costumes. this is so fun for us. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah, uh, you guys did an amazing job. Um, I've never like 
I don't want to sound like I hang out at a lot of bars, but I do. <laughs> um, I've never seen an arm wrestling competition. Oh, yeah. Um, this was so much fun. Mm. And, and in Plymouth, it's every bar is all friends, so I don't right. know if you notice it. No, oh, yeah. I'm from here, too. I'm from the South Shore. Oh, no shit. Okay, yep. it's cool. Nice. Yep. Um, so, do you compete professionally in arm wrestling? Yes. How did yeah, you so, get involved in that? Um, so, for me, it actually started... I'm 39 now. So, for me, it started when I was 15, okay. um, originally, for two and a half years in high school. Just, where'd you uh, grow up? East Bridgewater and Brockton. So okay. basically, in the Brockton Enterprise in 1995, December something, yeah, I, I saw a little not, uh, class of '93 in, in Whitman. Oh, okay, cool. I'm class of right. '97 East Bridgewater. Sweet. All right, yeah. All right. So I saw in the Brockton Enterprise in the uh, scores and standings section, the sports page. Yeah. There was a uh, you know the, the upcoming events, and they had like listed uh, a tournament in Cape Cod for arm wrestling. And yeah. I just looked at my mom and I was like, hey, you know. Can you drive me to this? Can I do it? And she was like, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, all right, cool. And we went from there. And I did it for about two and a half years at that age. And then just the injuries, they add up so quick on your shoulder, I, your I, wrist, I your tendons, imagine, elbows. Like, so many people have like walked up and like, my arm feels like junk. Yeah, you totally, know? yeah. Yeah, so from there I took a, about a 20-year hiatus. Yeah. Came back to it two and a half years ago, and it's been pretty good. I've uh, I made Team USA twice the last two years. We just came back from... Um, this year was Budapest, Hungary for the World Championships. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. And the year before was um, Bulgaria, which oh, I would wow. never go to right, unless right. it was for Team USA. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's fun that it took us so there. So I'm assuming Team USA, it's not an Olympic sport, but it's, you still So compete. that's the thing. If it was Olympics, yeah. that would be the teams that right, would right, send right. over. Right, right, right. So you're basically competing at a world level. Yes. But not, quote, unquote, Olympic level. Right, because we we're, not, we're not in the Olympics yet. They've yeah. been trying forever. And the Olympics comes out, how much money are you willing to spend? Sure. You have to show a certain it's, amount of money you're willing to spend to like get marketing. in. marketing. And, yeah, sure. That's why when you see certain sports get in, you're like, how is that a sport even? Like, you question it. It's because, well, they had the, the 10, 15 million to pad the, yep. you know, to get the Olympic Committee to let them in. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying there's a lot of controversy about the Olympic Committee. Oh, yeah, no, no, but right. Some, yeah, I've heard some stories. Occasionally here and there every week. <laughs> um, right. So, how would you rate this event, the Jordan and Carl settling a bet, in, in the events you host? Uh, Oh, this is top of the level. This is, like, awesome. The, I, the crowd's I, incredible. The crowd. you, just like you said, the South Shore people, Plymouth people, the yeah. bar owners, everyone, you know, I was service industry, too, at times yeah. in my life. It's just everyone bands together, and they're fun, and everyone's excited. And there's coaches and yeah. costumes. And it's and, your Sunday nights. You're yeah. blowing off steam, yeah. and it's just fun, and you're you're seeing your workers, your employees, your right. helpers. Everyone's helping each other, and it's just exciting. It, it was fantastic. It was one of the most fun nights I've had recently. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're glad that you guys came out and were part of it, and and and, and the most important thing was for a good cause. Yes, that you was know? that's and why that, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, Hel- helping to feed people in, in need. Yeah, because Carl actually asked. He's like, "What do you? Uh, what's the cost?" And I was like, "Oh, I don't know. You got to talk to Josh, who was yep. the uh, the head referee tonight." Yep. And um, and so I said to Josh, "I'm like, yeah." So Carl asked me about costs. What do you think about that? He's like, "Obviously, we're just doing it for free." Nice. He's like, oh, it's just that's charity. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just charity. It's oh. like you, people helping people. Right, I always right, believe right. in people but helping that, people. So it's. I believe in that too, but you, you never know. Like, no, that's no, of fantastic course. That you yeah, guys yeah, did no, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but we got you know free plate of food. <laughs> yes, it's, it's great. Yeah, don't. Carl's we get a couple drinks, but I'm not nice. much of a drinker, so yeah, you know, right. I was like, hey. so <laughs> if great. someone wanted to have you guys host a arm wrestling competition for say their bachelor party, yeah, for sure. I feel like it would be a great bachelor party. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. The male um, ego, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> like, you, you start drink? tonight, even. Oh, yeah. I got I a 77 year old Norm. I know a lot of those people. Me. Yeah. 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 Dude, no. you lost. No one ever believes they lose and dude, they lose. He, he beat you three times. <laughs> I know. So Give funny. it up. Yeah. Like the wrist is. Yeah. How is that a loss? Because <laughs> you went under the line. And he's what 77. <laughs> I know. Norman Debio is incredible. Yeah. He's incredible. Multiple world champion. He's been doing it for 42 years. He didn't even start till he was 35. Are you serious? Yeah. And his first competition. And he won it right off the bat. I wouldn't have. I, I wouldn't. Like I'm watching. Oh yeah. And I'm like, I wouldn't have placed in the female category. Oh, I know. Like, <laughs> those girls are amazing. Yes. Dude, yeah. between Crazy Horse and Caitlyn, that was oh, Michelle. My God. Yeah. So Michelle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was oh, so good. Was the great. costumes. I yeah. love the costumes. So um, this is oh. so great. I'm glad uh, you guys were part of it. Hopefully this becomes an annual thing. Cause yeah, I think, this uh, is so fun. This was great. I used to come here just to watch bands play. And stuff, yeah, oh, you know, the great, local yeah, artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so where can people find you guys online if they want to book some sort of yeah. arm wrestling competition? This is going to sound very long, but it, it's called um, Hand Control Worldwide. So handcontrolworldwide.com. There's actually a Facebook page for it. Yep. Pretty much it's Josh and John Brown, this other yep. gentleman who's in Minnesota, and they run a... Like a you know a YouTube podcast series, sure, yeah, and um, for arm wrestlers, you uh-huh. know, and it's about history and stuff. But 
those two guys, it's like any other sport, arm wrestling. There's so many leagues and promotions out there yeah. that it's it's kind of like well you know UFC, Bellator, all these things or IBF, WBF, WBA. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have all these people competing. Like we'll know our promotions. So you can't. That's the other reason why we can't get the Olympics. Right. No one can. We're just the lit- world champion. Yes. No, 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 no. We're exactly. the world champion. Yeah. No one can just put their ego to the side and say let's just work as a team, screw our differences and get ahead. Right. So unfortunately, that doesn't exist for us in our sport. So yeah. the best way is to go through people like us, like yeah. actual arm wrestlers who care a lot about it. So yeah. So. Josh and John, or Josh Grant, who's here tonight, who pretty much ran most of it yeah. um, for our side, you know. Um, so Josh at you know handcontrolworldwide.com. You know, well, you guys are amazing. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, not only were you on the ball doing the right thing, but you were having as much fun I felt like oh, as everyone else. So exciting. Um, Sometimes you just want to take the microphone and commentate <laughs> yourself. You know, I want to be like, yeah. come out next. Yeah, like, that was great. So Jordan did a that. great job. Jordan's awesome. Yeah. That was um, funny. So, so much fun. Uh, thank you for being part yeah, of the Yeah, thank you, man. Really. This is it exciting. I love man. this stuff. Thanks. Local. Yay. Go. All right, so um, we are here with Mark of the Malbar, the new Malbar. New Malbar, bro. Yes, sir. So, um... You work with Jim. I do. Tell us all the horrible things that Jim does to you. Oh, he's the, uh, <laughs> you know, the green-headed dragon. He's the worst person to work for. That's what so you're did there. you work at uh, Blue Eye Crab before you worked no, there? No, I did not. So you I just started not. working at Malabar? Started working at Malabar. He, uh, him and Heather had been coming into another place I worked at yep. over the summer and known him for a little bit, and uh, they would frequent the bar when I was on. So that's how I got to know him a little more. So the Malbar is a French, modern French bistro. Modern French bistro, yes. And um, the food is fucking amazing. Out of this world. Um, yeah. I although I went and had French onion soup the other day, and I thought yeah. you were going to dump it on my lap. First off, first off, <laughs> it's not French onion soup. Let's it's get just this onion straight. Soup? It's onion soup. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. All right. I'm yes. sorry. And, my bad. Uh, my bad. <laughs> no, yeah, but the no. bowl makes it seem that, like you're going to dump it on my lap. Absolutely. All right. So please uh, you explain and the bowl. Else. So it's uh, it's just an odd shape. Um, it looks like it's tilted when I go to serve it to you, but it's and everyone kind of reaches for the bowl. Everyone like, reaches uh, for uh, it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so it's it's got short rib in it. It's Gray, got, it has a uh, uh, parmesan type foam in it's it. A, it's it's an aerated yeah aerated oh, cheese foam. So good. Yep. Um, so you've recently started there. I mean, the place has been open like what, two, months. two months. Just over two months. Yeah. And the food's amazing. Yeah. How have you felt uh, the Plymouth reception? Did you work in Plymouth before? Yeah, I've worked in Plymouth uh, pretty much most of my most of my bartending career. Yeah. I, uh, I worked in Baltimore for a few years before coming back, and um, the reception's been great. Uh, it's something that I have thought, I, I've thought Plymouth needed this for a little bit, Yeah, um, this type of dining. It, it is definitely on the higher end. It's higher not, end. It's not the, let's take the family out for no, it's, it's and not, wings. No, you know, it's not three, four times a week. No, no. At no. all. But um, it, the food, it was just un, unreal. It is, like, it absolutely is. Absolutely unreal. Um and I, I'm, I was blown away even walking in while they're still working on the place. The, exactly. the, the look of the place is amazing. It used to be, at one point, a Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, before that, it was an IGA, yeah, yeah. then the Dunkin' Donuts, and um, yeah. And you wouldn't recognize it. it no, it, not amazing. at all. Not at all. They completely re, redid everything, uh, built it out from yeah. scratch, and uh, you wouldn't recognize it from before. So, uh, being part of Malbar... It's apparently in your contract when you signed it a couple months ago that you have to arm wrestle. Did, were you aware of that was a thing? Or were you just uh, you like, know, did you just write it off and be like, they're full of shit? I, it, wasn't, it wasn't fully disclosed uh, <laughs> right at the beginning, but uh, working for them a little more, I kind of saw something like this happening. Yeah. And, uh, no, it is what but, it is. But you did pretty good. How did you place? So, uh, fifth. Fifth, fifth, that's not of, bad. Four, four and two, four and two. Yeah, you know. the, the competition was really intense. It was, it was pretty intense. You know, we had the uh, the young gun from from Blue Eyed Crab, Blue-eyed come Crab. Out on top. You, you know? know, it's one of those things. It's like when you're beat out by the guy who works for your for, boss. You're like, yeah, all right, you know, whatever. It, it works out, yeah, all right. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, he's he was impressive. Um, I, I can't believe the level of competition. 
There were several matches that went on for multiple minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was great, you know, and for a first, uh, first year event, inaugural event, um, it was a great turnout, and I see this happening um, in the future, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. just getting better and better, for sure. And it was for a great cause. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all I mean, in all, people, you know, we fed people tonight. Yep. Yeah. We had some drinks. A few. We had some food. <laughs> yeah. We drank some more. A few, yeah. We watched people work hard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the real question that the bar talk fans want to know: What do you do to maintain that mustache? Uh, you know, that is it's like a just, crazy dope mustache. It's uh, honestly, it started from when I was a young kid looking up to my uncle. He uh, he was the uh, he was the one that had that Luigi style mustache yeah. growing up, being Italian growing up, and uh, it was something I always aspired to have. And, uh, Do you put like beard oil in? Uh, it nothing fancy. No, I, just, just... I, I have a comb in my back pocket at all times. I brush it out, and uh, that's that's pretty much it. No, nice. I don't have too much more time to uh, put any oil or, right, or right, wax right. into it's just, it. So it's, it's just, just the it's just uh, lack it's of shaving. Lack of shaving. <laughs> it's it's a natural thing. I yeah. think uh, you know my uncle passed it on to me. Outstanding. <laughs> so uh, you, you you did fantastic tonight, and uh, thanks for being part of the show. Absolutely, bro. And I will continue to see you at the Malbar. Right on. Thank awesome. you, Andy. Thanks, man. Take care. So Don't mess us up, Carl. Jesus Christ, Carl. <laughs> Get behind the bar where you belong. So here we are. So here we are with Ashley, my fiance. Andy, nobody's supposed to know about that yet. Well, I'm sure Fish will edit that part out. All right, you don't have to. <laughs> so Ashley uh, works here at the New World Tavern. Hi there. But started at Cornerstone? No, I've no. always been here at the New World Have Tavern. You always, really? always, always, always been you... at the New World Tavern. Oh, see? So right when the New World Tavern absorbed, absorbed the Cornerstone. The Cornerstone it was they, right when you came over. They sent out this banner flag of blah, blah, blah. We need the best server in the entire the, the world. The best breakfast server We need server somebody ever. who can wake up at 5 a.m. and go to sleep at 2 a.m. And that was literally what their ad said. And you were like, that's me. That's me. And then you're like, and... I'm going to engage myself to, With Andy. to the fattest, <laughs> beardiest guy who comes in. And then I came in. <laughs> so, um, we've known each other. I only, I, only, uh, I only proposed to you, Andy. The only reason that I proposed to you... Because you found something behind the bar that looked like a ring? No. Because <laughs> you love me so much? Because I came in that morning and I found a piece of metal that looked somewhat like a ring. And then the first man that walked in the door that I happened to adore, through the door that I adore, Andy, was so you. So wait, if any guy walked through the door that you adored, you're going to... I thought we had something special. Andy, I don't adore many men. I thought we There's had something special. There's only about two, so that you had a 50-50 chance. It was me or, or some other guy? It was you or the mailman. I don't know how I feel about that. I bet you feel you're good. You are first. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, you're listening, make sure you go to the New World Tavern before the mail arrives. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> and Andy, and you walked in and you were so fresh and pressed outside of the shower. And no, one, all... no one who knows me is going to believe any of that bullshit. <laughs> And they're going to be like, he picked his clothes and out of I, these sort of not I, dirty piles. And I just happened to have this ring, uh, this this um, this um stainless steel grab ring. Which I still treasure and still have. I had the stainless steel in grappling a vault couple. somewhere. And, uh, and I asked you to marry me only because of your... My kids are so excited to have a stepmom. Oh my god, <laughs> I did not know you had children. <laughs> Oh my God, does, does he really have children? Oh, yes. Are you oh, I do. Me? And they're like, oh, we're so happy that you have a stepmom. How old are our children, honey? Our children are almost 16 and almost 14. Thank God. One of them is a girl, so you have to like do the whole talk thing. Is are six, you ready for the talk? Is the 16-year-old the girl? No, no, no. Why do you do this to me already? Are you ready to have the talk about the birds, birds and the bees? The birds and the bees. Doing it? Do not let men stick their penis in you. Don't I, I feel, do it. I feel like... Don't do it. You've got a hairbrush. Oh, my God. I feel like... You've got fingers. <laughs> you've got a hairbrush. What? <laughs> you've got a toothbrush. <laughs> Suddenly, so I am reconsidering Andy, who I'm, so, I'm marrying. Andy, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're going to help me. 
that you're going to let me co-raise your daughter. No, I'm, I'm so, so concerned right now. You're going to let me co-raise your daughter. Thank God. And I will ensure <laughs> that she does not have sex before marriage. Because there's so many other tools. <laughs> well, that's good to know. And I don't mean tools like you and fish. Wow. <laughs> I feel like this was a public service announcement. Oh, this is the best idea we've ever um, had for an interview. So... Now I'm regretting even bringing you on the show. Listen, no, every, but this is I, Carl and Jordan's show, so fuck it. I don't is care. Is this Carl and Jordan's show? Yeah, this is going to be Bar Talk. So, just so you know, Carl and Jordan, so right now... So they're, like, making out somewhere. Right now, it's the end of January. We're at January 30th right now. Where are we at? Uh, it's 20. not the 20th, yeah. All right, we're sure. at January 2030-something. 2030-something. Just so you... Okay, great. So... Jordan and Carl, about six months ago... Do you think their wives know about them? Yeah. Invited me on this podcast. And they said, well, Ash, we stopped the podcast. We can't have you on it anymore. And I just found out last week that they're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they decided they didn't want people who worked for them on the podcast. Well, and they, they, just, they just can't hand. They, they just but then cannot. they put me in charge of it. Right. They, tonight, they so. can't. Those those big dogs don't hear me barking. Well, and I, those I, little I think, birds, those little birds can't hear me chirp. I think they're more concerned about what you're going to tell their daughters. Because right. had I thought about that, you might not be on the podcast So at right the now. moment in time, is Jordan having a girl? I don't know. I think it's a boy. Isn't I think he's boy? having a boy. So Carl, Carl Heine, Carl Heine had three boys. Anytime I want Carl to leave work, leave the tavern, or feel uncomfortable, I talk to him about women in the menzies. <laughs> <laughs> he always be like, time to go. And I always <laughs> preface it with, so Carl, I know you had three boys. I need to tell you about my cycle. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, okay, okay, I gotta go. 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 Tell me when you get back. I gotta go. Tell me when I get back. I get back. I'll get back soon. So, back. what do you think about tonight's event? Tonight's event was killer. I had no idea there was going to be such this huge turnout. It was so amazing. It was amazing. And the fact that everybody, everyone that came into the tavern, Everyone coming into the tavern is a frequent flyer, mm -hmm. and everybody came in expecting their Sunday night dinner, and they said, holy cow, you're giving me an event. Thank you so much, and they happily... The thing that blows me away, and I've said this a hundred times before, and I'm sure our listeners are tired of it, but too fucking bad, right? Is the support is, you know, BBC was here, Speedwell was here, um, Craft Beer Cell was here. Everyone was here hugging and high-fiving everyone. It was all for the food bank. It was all for fun. And everyone down here more or less gets along. It was every other city and state that you go to in America. You expect all these people to be rivals. Right. But yes, in, right. Right. You're fighting for the but same in, dollar. But in, down here, everyone in loves In Plymouth, everyone. Massachusetts, everybody on this strip, they are always embracing each other yeah. and and struggling for everyone else to do better than yeah. that they are. Yeah. It's and, amazing. And that's what makes the Plymouth downtown world go round. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you for... for I'm a little bit inebriated, so thank you for having me. Well, you're on inebri... Uh, bar talk on inebri... Art, whatever. <laughs> thank Excuse you. Excuse us. Thank you for... Um, that was me, not Andy at all. That was totally me. Uh, thank you for um, putting a little extra whiskey in my car bomb French toast the other night. I don't ever put extra whiskey you in this car never, bar. Ever, I don't ever do, do those that. such things. It's fucking well, delicious. You know, uh, car bomb French toast. Just in case. Fucking dope. You get your fiance fired. Yeah, right. Andy, I thought we were engaged. You're gonna, you're gonna Sorry. Have to her now. And then she started saying things like inappropriate to my kids, and I'm like, I don't know if I. They're not here. Are they listening to us? <laughs> my kids listen to this podcast. Do they know yes. what I did? <laughs> <laughs> do they know what you did no but they will now ah! <laughs> so all right kids uh this is your new stepmom say hi mom hi kids <laughs> and uh it, it's it's true love because she gave me like a stainless steel it was it was a stainless steel washer nut with an extra um hex nut screw on the That's other true side love, yeah. right all right <laughs> So, um, we will see you at the next breakfast brunch. See you guys tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. I'm going to work. That's a lie. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Home and don't listen. I'll see, you, I'll see you in the morning. Okay, bye. Should I tell him how big his penis is on the... Uh, wait, on, who? On wait, what? <laughs>
so um, this is probably going to be the last interview of the night, and we are here with... JR from Second Wind Brewing. And so Second Wind is the newest and greatest uh, brewery in town. Uh, definitely the newest. Newest. Work, working uh, on the greatest. If you like um, porters, right? The um, shit. Thank you. Midnight Oil is a, a porter. Uh, chocolate mid- milk stout. Chocolate Jeez, milk I knew stout. I was going to yeah. get that wrong. Yeah, so that's been a few, I'm a few drinks in, yeah. so we'll, we'll let that go. Aren't we all? It's, yes. Um, so what did you think of tonight's event? Uh, it was good. I like I liked the uh, the show of local camaraderie that you yeah. see here as far as, like, the residents and the businesses. So do you together. think Second Wind is going to compete next year? I would love to. Yeah. That'd, that'd be awesome. To, and, this was a good showing of, like, that we definitely need to bring in a oh, ringer. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So do you think um, you'll get Hans in the female division? Uh Possibly, uh, he strong second. He's the a strong female. second. <laughs> the female, so you probably have someone better than him. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, so I would love to see him and Tatum arm wrestle. Oh That'd my god, awesome. Tatum was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Did, there were so many good like matches tonight. I was blown away. Um, and all in all, it's for a great cause. Uh, the uh, Plymouth Area Food Bank. I think they raised a lot of money. Uh, there was tons of people here. I was blown away. Yeah, this is a good event to get behind. So how do you feel being the new business in town? I mean, you guys are already part, well, automatically part of, of the community because everyone in town is already, like, stocking your beer. But how does that feel? Do you feel like there's some, like, obligation that you guys have to – like, the bar is set pretty high. So how do you feel Second Wind is going to meet that bar? I wouldn't say it's an obligation. It's more of a privilege yeah. that, that they have us here. I mean, there's a lot of good bars that have a lot of good beers down here, mm-hmm. and for them to put us in our art in their arsenal yeah. is is a huge win for everyone. Um, it's a win for them. Like when we sell beers, we don't we don't we don't just sell the bars the beers. We we offer a partnership as far as like our sales goes. Like not per se partnership, but like. You know, we don't want to give them crappy beer to sell. Right. Because they're not going to be able to sell crappy beer. So sure. we give them good beer. They sell good beer. They make good sales. They make, they want more good beer. And that's that's kind of what we want to do. And are you guys planning something special for the spring? I, I know it's been kind of an ongoing thing about, like, uh, I've asked Kenny a hundred times, like, <laughs> when's the tap room open? And he's kind of like, oh, <laughs> fuck, really? That question? That's our uh, best hated <laughs> question. Uh, I, I know it's going to be one of those you guys will be open come tourist season. Oh, definitely. If we're not if we're not open by tourist season, uh, I'll slip my own wrist. So, like this is horrible. so. How do you see this year going? Like 2018 is the year, the second win year. Yeah, I mean, we're we hoping to go into a little bit strong. Um, hoping maybe mid February. Yeah, I, I know it's it's all up into the gambit at this point. It, um, I know it's all like town licensing and. Yeah, we have a couple more Sign hurdles and, to go yeah. through, um, but each each hurdle just brings us that much closer, and yep. the anticipation grows even more. Are you guys? So it's, you guys are the, t- the new brewery in town. Yep. Out of four, do you have something kind of in your back pocket for twenty twenty? Uh, not yet. I mean, I I hope we have a little time for that, but you have about two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we have we have a little planning. Yeah, like, you yeah. Know, we built a brewery in sixteen months, so yep. give us twenty four, we'll we'll do us we'll nice. do something special. And, and I I have to admit that uh, about eight months ago, Hans is like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm opening a brewery, and I, I my my auto response was, of course you are. Yeah. And then six months later, I'm like, oh shit, he's really doing yeah. that. So you guys have done an amazing job. Um, the midnight oil. I'm I'm like a dark beer guy, so that was amazing. Um, so I'm I'm thoroughly impressed, and we can't wait to see what you guys bring to Plymouth. Excellent. Uh, thank you. We're we're bringing another dark beer out. Yeah. Shortly. Okay. Uh, Is name, it called Andy? No, no. Yet yet named to be determined. It could uh, be Andy. It, it, Andy's we'll, a beer for dark beers or light beers. <laughs> we'll, we'll pencil it in. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, about you know seven and a half percent, a little oh, north, nice. yeah. um, kind of like the Midnight Oil Big Brother. Yeah. So we're hoping that hits out pretty soon. Awesome. Uh, well, you guys are killing it. Phenomenal beer. Second Wind Brewery. Uh, where can they find you online? Uh, secondwindbrewing.com, um, Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram, all those. I'm not entirely sure what the exact handles are. But yeah, or in February they can come hang out at your... Uh... Yeah, get, pick up a stool and yeah. hang out with us. Awesome. So uh, thanks for being part of this. And I suppose um, next year, second one, we'll have to put forward a team. Yeah, yeah, we'll put together an arm wrestling I'm team. I'm kind of feeling like an Amber <laughs> needs to do that. Yeah, um, we both need to step up our game. Yeah, dude, year. we don't have a girl. <laughs> That's our problem. They're easy to find. Good yeah, see, one. I feel like I would be competing in the girl section, <laughs> yeah. and I would get my ass kicked. <laughs> but, um, no, awesome beer. Thanks for being part of everything, and uh, we can't wait to see what you guys do. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome. All right, thanks for listening to our podcast. Uh, don't forget to check out our other podcast. Uh, there's the Bar Talk podcast. There's Old Colony Cast, and of course the Nebrier podcast, along with Jam Packed. Um, you can find all those on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. Um, if you're on some sort of service and you can't find it, let us know, and we'll help you out, and or add our podcast to that too. Um, you can contact us at inebriart at yahoo.com and follow us on Facebook as well as Twitter at inebriart. And feel free to send us some um, tips, ideas, advice, hate mail, whatever it is. You can get us there. And again, thanks for listening.